Okay, so this session will be recorded. Uh, my name is James Mawson, founder and editor in chief of Mawson News Publications, and I'm delighted to conclude the JPA Urban Europe Conference today, which has been a fantastic series of presentations and insights, breakout rooms, and collaborations, with a final keynote by Professor Greg Clark, who's the senior advisor on future cities to the HSBC Group and chairman of the Connected Paces Catapult in the UK. He's worked with three. 300 cities in five continents over a 30 year career and is the author of 10 books about cities. The 11th is on its way. We'll share more on that. He is the global expert on the BBC World Service series, My Perfect City, and the author of a monthly column called The Planet of Cities for RICS, which is the Royal Institute for Charters Affairs, if memory serves. He's an Irish city, citizen living in the UK. So, welcome, Greg. Thank you for joining us. Now, before Greg starts his powerhouse presentation, we're going to run a couple of quick polls that he's kindly helped us prepare. So, Claire, if I can turn to you to set up the, uh, the mentees, and that will enable people to start voting. Great. And if you go to menti.com and use the code 3126177, top of the screen, You'll be able to vote, which is, Greg says, we're entering the fifth decade of the century of the city. Do you think this decade will accelerate urbanisation, decelerate urbanisation, or keep the same momentum? Which is interesting in the time of COVID. So we'll give people a, a little time. We've got a hundred plus people. So we'll give them a, a couple more minutes and then we'll see. Uh, see what the uh, the outcome comes, and that might start to shape a little bit of what you say, Greg. I suppose. Well, the numbers are starting to stack up quite clearly towards accelerate urbanisation. We'll see if the numbers change in the next uh, next few seconds. But otherwise, I think we can take it as a good quorum for that question. And perhaps, uh, Clara, I think we might have another one as well. So again, go to menti.com and use the code 3126177. And the question this time from Greg is, do national governments in Europe know how to support the next five decades of urbanisation? Hmm, good one. Some do, some don't. No, they don't. And yes, they do. Mm. Well, you get some mixed signals. It's a, it's a different bubble chart rather than the bar chart here. I like it. It's a good bit of innovation here. Thanks, Carl. Again, we're getting a good quorum of people. Uh, good quorum of people saying national governments know how to support the next five de decades. Some do, some don't. Maybe Greg will be able to give some context of which ones he thinks do and which ones don't. But do use the chat function if you've got different thoughts about which cities are or aren't. That might be some useful feedback. In context for Greg as he talks. So we'll move on. I think there's another question, if uh, if I think, which is again go to menti.com and use the code 3126177. And what percentage of cities in Europe have the formal powers they need to translate urbanization into sustainability? So there's a number of different options 100%, 75%. 50%, 25% or 0%, we're getting hmm, formal powers. Again, quarter, it might be related to the previous story. Some do, some don't. Those with the formal powers maybe know how to support innovation. But again, we'll get Greg's thoughts and perspectives on this. Again, we're coming fairly... Uh, 
about 25 percent of cities i'm taking a quick note to, for it to come up in the q a Mm. Again, uh, and then 50% creeping up, actually, it's not too bad, it's creeping up 50%. We'll give it another 30 seconds, I think, just to see if there's a, a sudden swing from uh, from the blue Biden to the red Trump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Clara, I think there's uh, another one relative to cities in America and Asia Pacific. We can move to the next minute. Okay, this is the final Menti question poll. which is relative to cities in America and Asia Pacific, European cities are more ready for the future than both, uh, less ready for the future than Asia, but less than America. No. Okay. Uh, i trying to read it. Uh, it's it's uh, less than Asia, more than America, less than America, more than Asia, and less than both. So it's it's all four quadrants, James. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So I, my uh, my notes, it's, there's uh, too many less readies. Apologies for that. Okay. Right. Apologies. Error on my side. Sorry, Greg. It's okay. Interesting. Vote this one, James, because people have only chosen two of the options. They're either more ready than both or they're less ready than Asia, but more ready than America. Nobody thinks they're more ready than America. And nobody thinks they're less ready than both so far. Yeah, I think so. I have a slight suspicion that going into the poll, there might uh, there might have been too many less many's. So I think we should take this one with a degree of scepticism. But okay. the fact that we've got more ready for the future than both, I think, is a, an interesting sort of signal. But yeah, Greg, we'll we'll just double check while we we go through your actual keynotes. Uh, just to make sure that the poll was set up properly. So I think that might be an error on my side. So apologies for that, Greg. But uh, now, love to hear your keynotes. Give us some, give us some thoughts, and then I'll just remind people that we do have a chat function. So if you think of some questions for Greg, we've got some prepared. But uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And again, which city's doing well, and which aren't? You can put out your thoughts. Greg, over to you. Well, firstly, James, thank you very much indeed. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you to everybody for concluding the votes just then. I found that interesting. And uh, many of the things I'm going to talk about are directly related to the polls that people have just made. Now, I'm aware that you've had a very busy day. I've looked at the agenda and it's been an incredible event, it seems to me, in terms of looking at almost every aspect of the future of, of European cities. And uh, when I was asked to give an inspiring keynote speech, I thought, well, uh, you know, beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. Whether it's inspiring depends upon you. But it occurred to me that I should therefore talk to you about what I find inspiring. And I want to say very quickly that, that my personal love affair with cities, and particularly with cities in Europe, dates back 30 years. As James said, I've visited and studied and reviewed 300 cities. And what I love and find inspiring about cities is not really anything to do with urban policy. It's to do with very large numbers of people using cities as sharing platforms, as uh, systems. Uh, it's the way that cities synchronize the behavior of people. It's the, it's the choreography of the city. It's the, the sight, uh, the fiber, the feel, the smell, the vernacular of the city. If you like, it's cities as places, cities with identities, cities that have personalities and characteristics of their own. It's the uniqueness of each city that actually inspires me. And I think of cities each as having their own dance, uh, their own song, uh, their own music, their own soul, their own muse. Um, so I come to this as somebody who's just kind of excited by being in cities and being with cities. That's what really motivates me. Now, the grounding idea for everything I'm going to say to you today is that we've entered the fifth decade of the century of the city. So I think of this century as beginning in 1980, when roughly 40% of the world's roughly six and a half billion people were living in cities and ending in roughly 2080, when 80% of the world's then nine and a half billion people 
will be living in cities. And at that point, global population growth is predicted to stabilize. So if you like, 